Hi everyone, I'm Richard, here today to take a look at the new Radeon RX 480. Yup, in the wake of Nvidia's Pascal launch, now it's AMD's turn. And it, it's actually a very different strategy from the red team here. GTX 1070 and 1080, they aim at the premium end of the graphics market. RX 480 here is for the mainstream player. Priced at $199, it's all about offering a sweet spot in terms of price versus performance. And for my money, it's very, very compelling. This is the AMD reference design, essentially a triumph of function over form. If you're looking for a premium finish, you'll be wanting one of those partner cards. This one is all about hitting that target $199 price point while delivering very, very quiet performance. Now, looking at the top of the card, you'll note just one six-pin PCI Express power input. The RX 480 has a TDP of just 150 watts. Meanwhile, on the rear, you'll find three display ports conforming to the 1.3, 1.4 HDR spec, along with HDMI 2.0B. But that's kind of it. For a mainstream card, I'd really like to have seen a dual-link DVI port, and maybe we'll see that on a partner board. One thing that is worth pointing out is that this is an 8 gigabyte version of the card, and this comes with faster 8 gigabits per second RAM. Now, the more mainstream 4 gig version gets 7 gigabit per second modules instead. But it's that performance that you're really interested in, right? Essentially, what we have here is a great competitor to two of our favorite GPUs, the GTX 970 and the R9 390. This is the division running at ultra at 1080p. Now, you see that red line there? That's the RX 480, beating off both R9 390 and GTX 970. In fact, it's about nine to 10% faster overall, and it's absolutely trouncing its predecessor, the R9 380. Now that was a pretty decent card actually for its time, but the 480 is actually 48% faster here. Next up, Far Cry Primal. Now this is an interesting one because the R9 390 is around 11% faster than the new card, but the RX 480 still noses slightly ahead of the 970. Now we have to bear in mind that some games really like memory bandwidth. Far Cry is seemingly one of them, which is why the 512-bit memory interface in the 390 seems to work so well here. And of course, there will be scenarios where GTX 970 beats the RX 482. Now, Crisis 3 is a game where the Nvidia card has a slight win, but the Rise of the Tomb Raider, well, running under DX12, the GTX 970 really has the advantage here. But the bottom line is this, generally speaking, the overall experience is broadly comparable to much more expensive GPUs. Sometimes the RX 480 is a little better, sometimes it's a little worse, but the ballpark performance is always there. And of course, those DX12 games where AMD dominates, well, of course, they still dominate. Check this out, Hitman under DX12 on RX 480 at 1440p is only a touch slower than the same benchmark running at 1080p on GTX 970. Okay, so what about overclocking? Well, AMD has updated its control panel with a new tool that allows for much more granular overclocking at various power states. And in this respect, it's rather similar to Nvidia's GPU Boost 3.0. But you can just adjust frequency offsets as usual. The 8 gigabits per second RAM in our reference model here hits 8.8 .8 easily. But core frequency, well, that's different. I could only get stability with a mere 4% boost overall. And this bumps up the core to around 1310 megahertz from the stock 1266. Now, that might not sound like a lot, but that boost clock is quite dynamic on the 480 at stock frequencies. On some games, it will stick to 1266. But in others, it'll top out around 1180 to 1200. With the overclock in place, the end result is an extra 10% of performance generally, but efficiency drops significantly. And on the reference card here, that fan really needs to work overtime. Now, it may well be the case that partner boards have the thermal solution and the power to really push the overclock, but the reference model is pretty well balanced at stock frequencies. In terms of power consumption, well, RX 480 has a 150 watt TDP. Now, under peak load, we saw that our test system consumed around 270 watts. Now, that's a huge improvement over the R9 390, but only a more modest saving compared to the GTX 970. And remarkably, the much more capable GTX 1070 is even more efficient, even with its Titan X level performance. All of which is fascinating, of course, but what I really want to stress is what this $200 card is actually capable of delivering in terms of the gameplay experience. 
You might have noticed that on our channel, we do a lot of 970 versus 390 1080p performance testing. And the reason why is straightforward enough. These cards take your compromised console experience and make it a whole lot better. So check this out. This is GTA 5, no MSAA, paired back grass quality, but everything else pretty much maxed out. 1080p, 60 frames per second, twice as smooth as console with better visuals. And we're not using our usual overclocked i7 here with fast RAM as we do in our benchmarks. This is a Core i5 6500 paired with bargain basement 2133 MHz DDR4. Next up, Star Wars Battlefront. Dialed back settings and 900p on PS4, 720p on Xbox One. With RX 480, I'm running this maxed out at ultra settings at full 1080p. Now this is another palpable upgrade over consoles that you'll only get with a PC. And finally, The Witcher 3. Now this is a pretty demanding game. PS4 sees a veritable grab bag of various graphical settings, while Xbox One has to contend with a sub-native resolution. On PC, with the RX 480, getting this to run locked at 1080p60 is a piece of cake. Just whack up all those settings to high, turn off Nvidia's wasteful hair works feature, and enjoy a superb, silky smooth experience. And that's the bottom line really. AMD itself, well, it's positioning the RX 480 as the cheapest GPU available for a premium VR experience. And yeah, it is that. And yet, yeah, I get that. But in a world where those headsets are still so expensive, I see this more as a card for the players. Yeah, that's Sony's slogan for PS4, but it's quite apt actually. After all, the Polaris 10 technology found in the RX 480 takes center stage in the upcoming PlayStation Neo console. Overall then, RX 480 isn't the fastest GPU money can buy, but that was never the point. The cost of a superb console beating PC just got a whole lot cheaper. This is a highly impressive value play and I'm really looking forward to seeing the Nvidia response. Okay, so that's all for now. Remember to like and subscribe if you found this useful and want to support our work. But as always, thanks for watching.